this video is gonna help you decide if you should buy the new Mini 3 Pro, which is being officially announced on May 10th. The big question you need to ask yourself, and we're gonna help you answer, is if you need to buy a sub 250 gram drone. Is it even worth it? Or should you get something larger that has more features? Or maybe the Mini 3 Pro has all the features you need anyway. So let's find out. But first, I wanna let our subscribers know that we are gonna announce the $230 Best Buy card winner from the last video this coming Monday, the day before the big announcement of the Mini 3 Pro. We may have lost the bet by saying we thought it was gonna be released on April 21st, but hey, it was a lot of fun and somebody's gonna make out with a huge discount on this drone. So let's get into the advantages of buying a drone that is under 250 grams. This is mostly going to apply to the US, but it also will have other applications around the world. In the US, you do not have to register a drone if it's under 250 grams or 0.55 pounds. But what does that actually mean? That means you don't have to pay the FAA $5, literally, $5 or register the drone, which will put an identification number on it. The reality is they can still track your drone because you have a purchase receipt and because you sign in with the app usually. So all you're really gaining in that regard is you're saving $5. These drones are expensive, so $5 is not much in the scheme of things. Other than that, you're getting a small form factor, which is really nice. I mean, these things will fit in your pocket pretty much. And generally, other countries are gonna have less restrictions on these types of drones. But that's about where it stops. See, just because it's under 250 grams doesn't mean you can fly it in restricted airspace. You can't fly it near an airport, for example. If you're gonna use it for your Part 107 license, you still have to register that drone. See, the FAA requires that you register any drones if you're flying them commercially. So even though it's under 250 grams, if you're gonna use it to make money or for charity or anything like that, you're still going to have to register it. Some other negative side effects we have to consider on a small drone is less wind resistance and less durability. If you're gonna make something light, that also means it's probably not gonna be very strong. Now granted, it won't hit as hard, but it's not going to be as durable. You also can't add any accessories to it. So if you buy a sub 250 gram drone, like say 249 grams, like the Mini 3 Pro, you cannot put prop guards on it. You cannot put lights on it, which means you can't fly it at night. You can't put floaties on it, which I think that's a bad idea anyway. And heck, even some of the skins and stickers are gonna put it over 250 grams. So none of these things can be done. And this also means that you cannot protect the props and fly it over people. So there's no advantage there either. Quick note, yes, you can add prop guards to your Mini 3 Pro. Yes, you can go buy a light and add it to it as well and then fly at night. You can do all of these things. You just have to register the drone if you're going to do it. Another thing I wanna point out with a 250 gram limit, it's not just 250 to 400 grams. It's not just the Mini 3 to the Air 2S. See, the next limit after 250 grams is the full 55 pounds. And let me show you what you can do if you're in that range. This drone is in the same class as the Mavic 3. That means you can fly this, an Air 2S or a Mavic 3 in all the same locations. You can also put a gimbal and a cinema camera on the bottom of one of these things or on top, depending how you configure it. And this drone, just the batteries alone for this weigh eight times what the Mini 3 weighs. So that 250 gram limit is great, but do keep in mind, it's not really that important. So at the end of the day, the only gains you have from a sub 250 gram drone, especially in the US, is you save $5 and it's small. That's basically it. You see, if you're getting a lighter weight drone, that means they have to cut way back on features. However, with the Mini 3 Pro, that might be changing because it actually has a one over 1.3 inch sensor with an F 1.7 aperture, which will let in a ton of light. These nighttime pictures are actually quite impressive. It also has a lens adapter that lets you go to ultra wide angle, which almost gives you a 180 degree field of view, which is really, really impressive and can make nice panoramic images that otherwise end up with those weird stitched skies that don't look very good. The pixel count is really high at 48 megapixels. Now, I don't know if that's the actual pixel count or if they're processing it to be 48 megapixels. It's capable of 4K video and slow motion in HD. It has quick shot features and the full 12 kilometer range, which, I mean, let's be real. You're not really gonna fly that far because you're probably gonna lose signal well before that and it's not really legal, especially in a drone that's only this big. You cannot maintain line of sight from 12 kilometers away, but it's got a powerful range and that's really useful in densely populated areas 
where you have a lot of structures you're trying to fly around. So let's compare that to the Air 2S, which is substantially more expensive. The Air 2S has a one inch sensor, which is a little bit better. It's 20 megapixels, which if the Mini 3 Pro is actually 48 megapixels, means that the pixels are much larger on the Air 2S, which means you'll get better low light. We actually made a video about that a while back that talks about the difference between small and large pixels and how that really helps. So the Air 2S is gonna have a higher quality camera, but it isn't gonna capture as much detail as this drone, which is really surprising. Now the Air 2S does allow for 5.4K video, whereas the Mini 3 has 4K video. But to be honest, that 5.4K video is really hard to edit, especially in DJI's codec. So honestly, 4K is usually what we shoot in most of our drones anyway, because it's just easier to edit down. And if you're gonna publish it to social media, it really doesn't make a big difference. It has a similar range and a similar controller type unless you go with the Mini 3 Pro's new RC controller that has a screen built in. You can get the Mini 3 Pro with the RC controller for the same price as you can get the Air 2S with a normal controller. Honestly, I don't know if the Air 2S is really any better. And then when you mix in that vertical video ability, you have a lot of extra features that you would not have otherwise. So maybe this whole 250 gram point isn't that big of a deal. They are getting a lot packed into these little drones. The Mini 3 also has obstacle avoidance front and back and a standard landing sensor. So it will have some protection when you're flying it because again, it's kind of hard to see that drone. So you're more likely to make mistakes. And especially if you're a newer pilot, you're going to want those sensors. As you get more experience, you'll probably find that you turn them off most of the time. So in conclusion, which drone is best for you? Well. The Air 2S has a lot of great features and a little bit better camera sensor when it comes to low light and just a more professional clean image. However, the Mini 3 is very, very close to that. And the reality is your skill level is going to outdo your drone. So if you're experienced and you're good with a camera, you're gonna be able to do anything you want on the Mini 3 that you could do on the Air 2S. So it really doesn't make a big difference. If I were to go to the store today and pick one of these two drones, I would be buying the Mini 3 Pro. I think it's definitely the way to go, and I think that new smart controller is a great feature for the same price as the Air 2S. So it looks like May 10th may get expensive for a lot of us. Well, thanks again, guys. We will see you on May 9th, where we're gonna announce the winner of the previous video and the $230 Best Buy gift card. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing, and YouTube thinks you should watch this video next, so go check that out. We'll see you there.